This was prepared by the Flight Training Center, United Airlines. The DC-6 fuel system provides fuel under constant pressure with complete cross-feed capability to all four engines and for the cabin heater and the three airfoil heaters. The fuel used in the DC-6 aircraft is grade 100-130. It is green in color and weighs six pounds per gallon. Since the recognized color code for fuel is red, we have used red to designate the fuel in this presentation. The DC-6 and DC-6B Group 1 aircraft have a 10 tank fuel system, one main and one alternate tank for each engine, plus an auxiliary tank in each wing. The auxiliary tanks in all UAL DC-6 aircraft are deactivated. The DC-6A and DC-6B Group 2 aircraft have an eight tank system, one main tank and one alternate tank for each engine. The fuel tanks are of two types, integral and bladder cells. The integral tanks are formed by sealing the basic structure of the wing and are located between the front and center wing spar. The bladder cells are made of a synthetic rubber and fabric material. The compartments for the bladder cells are lined to prevent chafing. These cells must be kept moist to prevent drying and cracking. The filler necks for servicing the fuel tanks are located under hinged panels on top of the wings. The filler caps are leak proof and positive locking. Around each filler neck is a scupper with a drain leading through the lower wing surface to drain off any spilled fuel. Incorporated with each filler neck is a tubular screen to keep foreign objects out of the aircraft fuel system. Since the filler caps are all airtight, all fuel tanks are vented to the atmosphere through vent chambers. During normal operation, air is admitted to the tank to equalize pressure as fuel is being used. The air enters from the vent manifold line into the upper chamber, through the flapper valve, into the lower chamber, and into the tank through the tank line. The weighted relief valve will prevent loss of fuel during normal fuel surges, such as during a turn while taxiing. Fuel will enter the lower chamber through the tank line and close the flapper valve. The weight will prevent the opening of the weighted relief valve, thus preventing the loss of fuel. The weighted relief valve will open any time the pressure in the fuel tank exceeds approximately 2.5 psi. This will allow fuel to escape from the lower chamber into the upper chamber and overboard through the vent line. This is to prevent damage to the fuel tank. The integral fuel tanks have integral vent chambers, while the bladder cells have external vent chambers. The two types of vent chambers are similar in construction and function. Number one and four main tank vent chambers vent overboard through the lower wing surface near the wingtip. The remaining tank vent chambers are vented overboard through the vent line manifold. The vents are painted in red for identification. The vapor vent return lines from number one and number two carburetors empty into the number two main tank. The vapor vent return lines from number three and number four carburetors empty into the number three main tank. The normal rate of return is two to four gallons per hour.
Each integral fuel tank and set of bladder cells has a sump and sump drain valve located in the lowest portion of the fuel tank. Any moisture in the tank will collect in the sump and be drained out periodically. Most of the sump drains are covered by rectangular inspection plates shown in the open position on the lower surface of the wing. Each fuel tank has a booster pump incorporated with it to supply fuel under pressure to the engine under the conditions listed in the flight manual. Some of the tanks have external boost pumps, while the remaining have internal or submerged booster pumps. All fuel booster pumps are of the centrifugal constant pressure type. The pumps separate vapor from the fuel before it is pumped to the engine. These pumps are cooled and lubricated by the fuel passing through them. The booster pumps are operated by their individual switches, highlighted here, located on the overhead switch panel. These are three position switches, aft being high, center off, and forward low. The switches have a spring-loaded toggle that requires you to pull out to be able to move them out of the center or off position. The fuel tank selector controls, located on the forward left portion of the pedestal, have three positions. The forward position is main tank to engine. The center position is alternate tank to engine and the aft position is off. The tank selector controls are connected by cables to the fuel tank selector valves located in the respective engine nacelles. These mechanically operated three position valves direct fuel from the main tank to the engine, as shown for number two. From the alternate tank to the engine, as shown for number three. Or to shut off all fuel flow. A detent in each position assures you that the valve is properly aligned. The detent is part of the valve itself. Therefore, if you feel the detent, you know the valve has moved properly. The crossfeed controls are located on the forward right portion of the pedestal. They are also three position controls, with the forward position being off. The middle position is normal crossfeed, and the aft position is all engines to crossfeed. The crossfeed valves are located in the inboard engine nacelles, aft of the wheel wells. The left crossfeed valve has a thermal relief valve incorporated in its design to relieve excessive pressure in the crossfeed manifold when it is not being used and therefore closed at both ends. The middle or normal crossfeed position will allow crossfeeding of fuel between number one and number two engine fuel systems and between number three and number four engine fuel systems. The full aft or cross-ship crossfeed position connects the crossfeed manifold to the system and allows fuel from any one tank to feed all four engines. The filter in each engine fuel system is located in the respective engine nacelle at a low spot in that system. There is a drain cock in the bottom of each filter housing so that any water that has accumulated in it can be drained. 
there is no bypass valve in the fuel filter assembly. The firewall shutoff valves are cable operated Whitaker sliding gate valves. They are manually actuated when the engine firewall shutoff handle is pulled. These valves will shut off all fuel flow through the firewall, normally as a fire preventative measure. The Simmons Passator fuel quantity indicating system is used on DC-6 and DC-6B Group 1 aircraft. Its power is supplied from the aircraft DC bus through a power unit that supplies the necessary AC current. The fuel is measured in pounds by sensing the difference between the dielectric constants of fuel and air in the tanks. The fuel quantity is indicated on eight gauges, two of which are dual indicators located on the overhead panel. These ten indicators are of the ratiometer type and will return to the off scale or low quantity position when power is turned off or lost. The DC-6A and DC-6B Group 2 aircraft use a Minneapolis Honeywell capacitance type fuel measuring system. Its AC power supply is from the aircraft's inverters through the captain's inverter selector switch. The fuel quantity is indicated in pounds on eight gauges on the overhead panel. These are motor-driven gauges and will remain at their last indication when the power is turned off or lost. A test switch is located near the fuel gauges, which will drive them toward zero when actuated. If the gauges return to their original indications when the test switch is released, the indicating system is working normally. This test switch is installed on DC-6A and DC-6B Group 2 aircraft only and should be associated with the 8-tank fuel system. The fuel dumping controls are located under a door in the floor under the engineer's feet at the base of the pedestal. The door is shown here in the open position. These are three position controls. Full forward is dump valve closed and dump chutes retracted. Full aft is dump valves open, dump chutes fully extended. The middle position at the spring detent is the dump valves closed and the dump chutes partially extended for draining. The cockpit controls are connected by cables and pulleys to the dump chutes. Through a system of bell cranks, push rods, and cables, the dump chutes are connected to the dump valves. Using this system, the dump valves cannot be opened until the dump chutes have been extended at least part way. There is a dump valve in each fuel tank. Each engine fuel system, the main and alternate, are connected to the dump chute located in the lower aft of each engine nacelle. The amount of undumpable fuel in each tank is determined by the location of the dump valve in the tank and the height of the standpipe in the tank. When extended, the fuel dump chute extends well out into the airflow under the wing. This keeps the fuel being dumped away from the aircraft structure. The fuel for the cabin heater is taken from the number two main tank. 
It is pumped under pressure by the cabin heater fuel pump through a one-way check valve to the fuel filter. The filter is located on the forward wall of the left wheel well. The filter has a drain cock in the bottom of it to drain any moisture that might collect in it. From the fuel filter, the fuel goes through a solenoid shutoff valve to the control can where the fuel is metered by the pressure regulator for heater operation. The fuel pressure is sensed downstream of the pressure regulator, then transmitted to the fuel pressure indicator on the heater control panel in the cockpit. From the number three main fuel tank, fuel is pumped by the airfoil heater fuel pump through a one-way check valve. The fuel filter, the solenoid shutoff valve, then to the control can for each of the three airfoil heaters. The units in the airfoil heater system are the same as those in the cabin heater system. The fuel system for the cabin heater and for the airfoil heaters will be given additional coverage in the air conditioning and anti-ice presentations.